Hello, fellow members of Marsoc. It's yours truly, former free and section commander from Techcom, the V9 score C098. I'm here to teach you guys how to use uh, Stark's Marsoc's uh, medical ship. Um, so let's jump right into it. This is just going off the friggin' guide that Gabriel has made up. Um, ask you, how well do you know it? But I'm gonna teach you anyways, because I do not care. Uh, let's go through equipment. I don't really care about the preface right now, because it doesn't really matter. Alrighty. When you go through this, this is the first thing that you're gonna see. It's, uh, control to click. You're going to control, hit the medical thing, usually appears right here, and you're going to see an option for self. If you are in first person and looking at someone with your cursor over that their body, it's going to come up with their username, and it's going to have it appear, like, usually underneath yourself. This is usually what it looks like normally. Um, the new version actually has surgery underneath it. I'll probably update this later. Um, moving on to the next part. Uh, airway management, this this is just what's inside of airway management. You get two of each, nasopharyngeal airway and endotracheal tube. I highly recommend that you use the ET during the surgeries that I will be telling you about, and the nasopharyngeal airway is good for when they're conscious. Uh, breathing management, you got O2 tank. Um, that's going to keep them saturated during a surgery. Bag valve mask, usually better when they're really destabilizing fast and losing, losing a lot of blood. Non-rebreather is good for... Uh, when you just want to keep them O2 saturated. Circulation management, you got blood bag. Um, this is in order to get blood bags in the first place. Uh, you're going to need to set up an IV with someone else. Uh, get their blood and then give it back to the other person that you're doing surgery on. Gauze obviously gets rid of that shit. Um, you know, cleans up and, and all that good stuff. Tourniquet, um, I cannot stress this enough, but please... Apply your friggin' tourniquet when you get shot, because I don't want to have you come into friggin' base, and you're already dead. I don't want to deal with that. Um, there's obviously drawing blood. Um, we'll go over surgical sutures in there. I'm going to have to change all that. Uh, medicine is splint. You've got anesthetics, ketamine, painkillers, splints. Um, we also have epinephrine to wake them back up. Um, anesthetic, gonna use it during surgery to make them unconscious if they're not already unconscious. Ketamine, major, manage pain. Painkiller is usually best taken when they're conscious. It's kind of hard to swallow when you're, you know, not fucking awake. Um, this is continued. You've got energy drinks. You can drink this in order to raise up your health a little bit. Intravenous starter kit. Um, an IV usually goes into the freaking forearm. We're not going to be learning specifics in this video, I will be showing you later, but um, intervening starters kit. Uh, this is the only way to administer med medications, and it's the only way to administer um, and give more blood. Epinephrine, obviously, could wake them up. Uh, resuscitation, I don't think we will use this as much, um, because let's be honest here, it's Marsoc. Let's just put them out of their misery. Um, if they're pretty much dead, give them a nice headshot. Love tap. Don't have to wait for resources on people that don't really need them. Anyways, moving on. Surgery. You've got the catheter, balloon, 6-0 proline, 4 nylon. You're also going to have um, 5 proline uh, clamps and the uh, scalpel. So to go with uh, friggin' surgery... A thing that you're going to see, um, first thing that you're going to see is that surgery is going to pop up here. You're going to see blood going down. You're also going to see the person's general condition is going to be mild. Usually they may be unconscious and they're probably going to have major pain. First thing you want to do, go to circulation, click on tourniquet, and it's going to appear right here. Tourniquet's going to show up. Um, this is to begin surgical procedure, and you will see if they need surgical or if they're in critical condition. Now, if they're in surg uh, surgical and they need surgical, remember you need two people in order to make this work, and it's not like a team thing that we want to do, it's like an actual thing that you need to do. So follow these instructions really closely and you'll get by fine. First thing to do, circulation, manage your bleeding, place a tourniquet, I just said that. Go into oxygen, and you're going to go airway, endotracheal, it's going to appear right here, endotracheal, go into breathing, go to click O2. 
it's gonna say O2 sat. Um, and by the way, these first three steps, um, one person can do alone. Go into medicine and splint, start an IV, you see the friggin' stuff down here, start an IV, and you're going to inject anesthetic, and that's gonna make this conscious turn into unconscious if they're not already. Um, and this is where you're going to need another person. You can get that other person to go into surgery, grab the scalpel, click on the scalpel, it will say that they are open. Now what they're going to do is they're going to click on uh, surgery and suction, um, and then it's going to say suctioning, and then the other person will have to ask, act fast, and click on surgery again, and catheter, and it will say catheter is inserted or whatever, and then um, the other person can click surgery and then balloon, it'll say balloon inserted. Um, and then you can take uh, surgery 6 proline, and it'll say um, closed. And then what you're going to do is you're going to reverse that whole process. You're going to take out the balloon, take out the catheter, and then you're going to go with the uh, surgical uh, 4 nylon. That's going to close it up, and it's no longer going to say surgery. You're going to get a circulation, remove that tourniquet. Um, if there's any, like, if it says that they're injured, apply a splint that's going to allow them to run. Um, before you take out the IV, you're going to want to give them pain meds, make sure they're all good. Um, and you're going to go into breathing, remove that oxygen, take out that endotracheal airway. Um, and that's going to get them off the O2. You're going to go to medicine, inject them with epinephrine, this will wake them back up and they will... Uh, officially be conscious now um, and then you're going to remove the IV and that's just the surgery um, this is all a pretty quick process if you know how to do it um, getting blood from other people is a bit of a hassle so I highly suggest that you check your equipment and that you're good to go before you do other things um, or else you'll seem like an actual idiot um, and yes we won't be afraid to shoot you in the head as well if you're stupid uh, next thing, instead of surgery, you could also see critical, um, and this critical condition is pretty easy. There's only three steps you have to do. Uh, the first person can open them up, take a scalpel, and use suction. The other person will have to do a clamp, and then the other person that just opened them up is going to take 5 proline and suture them back up, and the critical will disappear. If they're losing a lot of blood, self-explanatory, um, tourniquet gauze, and blood bags. If the body wellness is going down, uh, you can use medicine as splint, and you've got a wide variety of things like O2, epinephrine, ketamine, um, all that good stuff uh, just to keep their body wellness. Also, if your body wellness is down just a little bit, um, if a bullet whizzes by you, you actually, uh, your wellness goes down. So just go into medicine and splint, and you can get an energy drink, and it will raise up your body wellness. Um, so that's a very quick run through of what exactly to do when you've got someone fucking hit and you want to deal with that. So that's cool, I guess. Um, I don't really care about this. First row, it's kind of self-explanatory. I just went through all this, minor pain, major pain, whatever. Um, by the way, quick facts real quick. Um, if you are feeling a little bit, uh, sadistic and you just don't want to help your friend because they're in major pain, um, it's going to be much harder, and they're actually going to go into shock. Like, they're, they're going to lose a lot of more blood uh, a lot faster if they're in major pain because their blood will be pumping much faster. This is one of the things that I love about the system is that it is very relative to mental and physical stress. Uh, so basically, think of pain as the mental stress scale. If they're in huge stress, um, that blood pressure and heart rate is going to skyrocket and that's going to give you more issues so keep their their pain level relatively low unless of course you're stopping the bleeding which is a different story but during surgery you want to keep them under wraps uh, same thing with critical procedures and same thing with splinting so hope you learned something and uh, contact Gabriel me myself or um, whoever the hell is in Marsoc at the time active uh, if you've got a question regarding uh, the SARC medical system or just MRR in itself. All right, cool. Bye.